final press conference for the incredible fight card we have on tap here this Friday night. You know, Matchroom Boxing and DAZN's 2019 boxing schedule has perhaps been the most prolific boxing schedule the world has ever seen. Over 35 incredible cards over the whole world, uh, all throughout America, the United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, Mexico, Saudi Arabia. And we ended here in 2019 with a bang in the Valley of the Sun, in the Copper State, Phoenix, Arizona. Now when I think of Phoenix, Arizona and boxing, inevitably, I think about Michael Carbajal. Manitas de Piedra, Little Hands of Stone. Name that after his favorite fighter, Manos de Piedra, Roberto Duran. And if you think about Michael Carbajal, you can't not think about his first meeting in 1993 with Chiquito Humberto Gonzalez. You know, this fight was, they were on a collision course. They didn't like each other. And Gonzalez had the WBC strap, Carbajal had the IBF, and it was just a fight that had to happen. And it was a historic fight. It's the first light flyweight fight that brought in a million dollar purse. It's the first light flyweight fight that headlined a pay-per-view event, and man, it did not disappoint. All the fight fans out there, they know Gaddy Ward, Hagler Hearns, Castillo Corrales. Google Carbajal Gonzalez and watch that fight. Carbajal was behind on the cards. He was dropped in round two. He was dropped in round five. He was hurt in round five. And he came back, he made the adjustment. His brother Danny in the corner said, show him the right, show him the right, show him the right, and finish with the left. And man, did he ever. Short left hook, you're not gonna ever see it prettier, landed right on the jaw of Chiquito, and he fell like a sack of potatoes. Carvajal had to even get out of the way to let him fall. Mills Lane could have counted to 20. He wasn't getting up. It became the 1993 fight of the year, Carbajal became the 1993 Fighter of the Year, and in 2006, both men were inducted to Canastota together into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Michael Carbajal, he won silver in 88 in Seoul, five-time world champion, the quintessential boxer-puncher, so much fun to watch, and he hails from right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And speaking of fun to watch, in Phoenix, Arizona, Man, what a fight card we have here this Friday night. So here to tell you all about it, the man that put it together, the president of Matchroom Boxing USA, Mr. Eddie Hearn. Thank you, David. Always fascinating to get a history lesson from you, and that was a particularly enjoyable one. And how happy we are to be here in Phoenix, Arizona, and what a year it's been on the zone. David was just reeling off the countries that we've been to. Of course, our first year promoting shows in America with our Italy expansion, our Spanish expansion. And who can forget that sweet moment in Saudi Arabia last week where Anthony Joshua reclaimed the Unified World Heavyweight Championship. We're still recovering, but we're ready for another huge night on Friday. It's great to have such a huge card here in Arizona. And we want to thank Francisco and his team from the Commission who have done such an amazing job in bringing this all together. We're learning so much about the American market and coming here and seeing the response of the fans in Arizona has been incredible. We're going to be, I believe, through 10,000 in the crowd on, Saturday, on Friday night and it's going to be one hell of an atmosphere for the main event. Former world middleweight champion Danny Jacobs against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. It's a great 168 pound fight and we cannot wait for the undercard that comes with it as well. It's great to see so many faces here in the room as well. Of course, the legend Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Thank you for, for being here with us this week. Two-time world champion Jesse Vargas is here. Number one super middleweight in the world, WBA world champion, Ring Magazine world champion, Callum Smith, here to watch his brother as well. <laughs> Stephen Smith here from the UK as well, former world title challenger, Ring Magazine trainer of the year, Joe Gallagher there being shy, former 
or Ring Magazine trainer here, Freddie Roach as well here. Welcome, Freddie. And uh, just shows you, this is, this is a big, big fight week. And we've got so much talent on the card that we're going to talk to. Just running through everybody. We've got the Albanian bear down the end, Reshat Mati, part of our elite team of young fighters coming through. Undefeated now, back in the flow. Great, great fighter to watch. And Raymond Ford as well from Camden, New Jersey, from that same mold of that elite team coming through from the USA Young Amateur Boxing Team. Gabe Rosado, seen him in so many fights of the years, over the years, of course, against Magic Sulecki on the zone in his last fight in Philadelphia was one of the fights of the year. Brilliant to have him on the card as well. Great little mix in 147 pound division, sitting next to each other there. Two of the very, very best amateurs to come out of the Rio Olympics. Of course, Josh Kelly now established in the top 15 in the world. He's really now looking to challenge for major titles in 2020. Had a great fight with Ray Robinson at Madison Square Garden recently. He saw Ray Robinson draw with Kavalowskis, who just gave Crawford a great fight at Madison Square Garden. Danny Argelusinov, unbeaten 147 pounder. Of course, won gold in the Rio Olympics as well. Liam Smith. Brilliant fighter, part of the famous Smith fighting family from Liverpool. Great fight for him on Saturday night, Friday night, I keep saying, against Roberto Garcia. Liam Smith, who has already won world championships at light middleweight, I believe, could also be in some big fights in the middleweight division in 2020. Roberto Garcia, great fighter as well. Another intriguing matchup, Maurice Hooker. Seen this guy in one of my favourite fights of 2019. I know it didn't go his way that night, but what a fight against Jose Ramirez. Both of those guys putting their world championship belts on the line in a unification fight. And of course, Mo now looking to move up, potentially to the 147 pound division where he just saw his friend and stable mate Terence Crawford do the business last Saturday. Great fight for him against Uriel Perez. Very, very dangerous. Looking forward to seeing Mo back in the ring. When you talk about Carbajal and the lighter guys, this is going to be a classic for the WBC World Championship um, and we can't wait. Um, team Canelo, Team Eddie Reynoso, of course in the building and ready for a, a big opportunity on Friday night with Martinez against Rosales. The WBC World Flyweight Championship, we saw Martinez come and have a no contest with Charlie Edwards on one of our shows in the UK recently. It was a great fight, he's extremely dangerous and Christopher Rosales former world champion as well um, at the, in the WBC flyweight division. Great fighter, saw him lose to Charlie Edwards in the UK, looking to become a world champion again on Friday night. When you talk about the main event, again, the interest in this fight has been through the roof. And I want to thank both guys for being part of this build-up and preparation. Daniel Jacobs, who we know so well, what a guy, what a gentleman. We know his life story, but what a fighter as well. Former world, two-time world middleweight champion, just coming off a decision loss to Canelo Alvarez at Cinco de Mayo in Las Vegas, now moving up to 168 pounds, um, ready to try and become a two-weight world champion in 2020. But this man over here, you know, he's been through the, the mill in this camp, he's stayed focused, a lot of people have written him off, and he's ready, he's in great shape. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. for a great opportunity and a great fight on Friday night. And as, as I said, the man there, the number one in the division, Callum Smith, watching this fight, interestingly looking at a potential matchup in 2020 as well so we're going to hear from all of these guys firstly we're going to start with the young guys let's give them a big round of applause ladies and gentlemen from camden new jersey raymond ford i want to give thanks to eddie Aaron, metro boxing and the zone for allowing me to display my skills on this card um it was a great camp great long camp uh, my team, we worked hard, and we ready to, to put on a show. So far, I had four fights as a professional. Now that I got the experience, uh, it, it's time for me to uh, step my performances up and start getting these dudes out of there. And I, I'm, com I'm, I'm confident about my about set. I mean, uh, Friday. And if you don't know who Ray Savage is, tune in uh, December th the 20th, and you'll get a glimpse of a, a future superstar. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. And another part of that young team coming through, managed, of course, by our good friend Keith Connolly, who we'll hear from shortly. 
uh, exciting young fighter out of Brooklyn. I think one of the top stars coming through in the amateur game right now, the Albanian bear Reshat Matin. Uh, first off, I'm, I'm not really a good talker, so I'm just going to make this short and sweet. Uh, thank you to Madrim, Eddie Hearn, uh, The Zone, uh, for giving me this opportunity. I'm trying to stay uh, super active, you know, three months, three fights, and um, yeah, by the end of the day, you guys are going to realize who the Albanian Bear is, and that's going to be me. I'll see you guys Friday. Thank you, Reshat. Thank you. We're going to move on now. Going over to, as I said, one of the top young fighters. And also, I missed this gentleman off the list. I don't want him to uh, tell me off because this is another great trainer. Though he might be hiding, Adam Booth. Is Adam Booth here? He's hiding over there somewhere. Adam Booth, welcome. Round of applause, please, for Adam Booth. <laughs> oh, he didn't like that. And Mr. Kelly, of course, as well. This young fighter, if you haven't seen Josh Pretty Boy Kelly fight yet, you need to watch him and watch him on Friday. Again, I believe one of the top 147 pound talents already right now in world boxing. Um, coming off a great fight at Madison Square Garden with Ray Robinson, uh, taking chances and opportunities way before his time. He's a good looking son of a gun, and my goodness can he fight. Ladies and gentlemen, from the UK, pretty boy, Josh Kelly. Hello everyone, it's nice to be in America again. Um, Obviously last time wasn't the best, um, we, we got a draw against Ray Robinson, it wasn't the best performance but um, we put that one behind us now and uh, sort of move on to Friday. Um, I'll be enjoying myself there so I just want to put the performance on, make it smooth, make it look good and um, yeah, man, I know we all enjoy but uh, good luck for the rest of the lads on the card and uh, got a great mini event and I'm looking forward to watching them go at it so yeah man, good. Thank you, Josh, and a future matchup potentially between these two great world to weights as well for the world title. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Rio gold medalist, Danny Arjelusinov. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy and honored to be here. Uh, thanks to my manager, management team, and thanks to my promoter having me here. Uh, we have a good prepared and uh, ready for this fight. Uh, it's gonna be a great fight. Uh, hope my opponent re is ready too. Uh, now I feel that uh, I am the one whom, pe whom people want to see me. Uh, and I will, uh, I will show all my skills this Friday night. Uh, thank you, watch me in the zone. Danny, oh, that was that was absolutely. Look, when Danny had his first fight, he could hardly say two or three words in English. That is brilliant. Well done, Danny. Oh, well done. Well done. Round of applause for Danny Arjelusinov oh, and his English skills. Fantastic. The first big step up for Danny Arjelusinov oh, on Friday night. I want to bring up his opponent, Alan Sanchez, please. Hi everyone. I want to thank Mushroom and Eddie Hearn, my team, everyone, and. I'll see you guys Friday. Thank you, Alan. Um, again, a great fight on the card this Friday. Liam Smith against Roberto Garcia. Roberto Garcia, former WBC silver champion. Liam Smith, former 154-pound world champion as well. Coming off a, a busy and active year fighting in Liverpool and Mexico. Great performance last time out. And of course now in Phoenix, Arizona. I want to bring up the first half of that fight on Friday night. Ladies and gentlemen, Roberto Garcia. Thank you, Eddie. First time I shake your hand, man. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I got called about this fight on Sunday, and which was awesome because <clears throat> Saturday was my anniversary. So I said, hold up, baby, postpone that. You got to do a job first over here. Then, uh, but. Some people think it's short notice, but it's not, because when you're a fighter, it's never short notice. So um, I'm grateful for this opportunity, man, and I'm gonna make the best of it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Roberto. The other half of that fight, as I said, part of the famous 
Smith fighting family, the former 154 pound light middleweight champion of the world from Liverpool, Liam Smith. Glad to be back here fighting again in America. So thank Eddie dissolving match room for me, Martin team, MTK. And uh, you know I'm happy we got a good opponent, Roberto Garcia, I know who's gonna come to win. I know he has been obviously in camp, I think he was scheduled to fight anyway, so I know he's gonna be fit and ready and and coming to win, but the same year I'm I'm in very good shape and we've had a very good camp so you know, I look forward to a good competitive fight, but one that I'll come through with flying colours and obviously I want to be back in the mix then for, for big titles. Um, you know, 154 or 160, I don't mind. Um, you know, we've got a new champion at 154, Patrick Texeda. We both just fought the same opponent last time out. That's a, that's a fight I'd like down the line, but you know, first and foremost, we've got Friday night and I look forward to putting the show on for you all and you know a top card with, with top fighters, prospects, world champions and uh, I'm privileged to be on this card and I look forward to the whole show so thanks for having me and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you Liam, Liam Smith against Roberto Garcia Friday night. Um, Maurice Hooker as I said coming back from one of the fight of the year contenders against Jose Ramirez I think Mo has been in some brilliant fights over recent times. Of course, the Saucedo fight in Oklahoma was one of my favourite, favourite nights. He went over to Manchester, he beat Terry Flanagan to win that world title over there. Came back and, as I said, unified against Ramirez in Dallas, which was a fantastic fight between two great champions. Now, new team behind him, and we'll bring up Dino Duva shortly from Rock Nation to talk more on that. But his opponent on Friday night, tough fight, Uriel Perez, coming off. A big win in his career. I think this is a much tougher fight than the originally scheduled Pedro Campo. Firstly, we want to hear from the opponent on Friday night, Uriel Perez. Hola, ¿qué tal a todos? Pues no tengo mucho que decirle, solamente que pues es la primera vez que estoy aquí. Vine a ganar, a dar una buena pelea. Y pues nada, sé que estoy ante un buen rival. Eh, Es peligroso, es un rival que, que lo da todo y pues un poco más de estatura, ¿no? Pero pues yo me considero un rival de, de fuerte pegada, un rival que sabe estudiar y sabe hacer su trabajo y pues admiro a cada uno de los boxeadores que están aquí y agradezco a la promotora y a la gente que me acompaña. Muchas gracias. Well, um, I have not, not, nothing much to say, but... At this time, uh, I'm really hoping for this fight. Uh, the, my rival is a, a, a bigger height, but anyway, he, 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 I respect him, and I respect all of the boxers that are here. And thank you very much for everything, and I hope it goes really well. Thank you. Thank you, Uriel. And as I said, um, to introduce the former world uh, champion, to the stage, the uh, president of Rock Nation Boxing, Dino Duva. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be part of this great program that Eddie, Matchroom, and the Zone have done in the last year and a half. Uh, we've had some great fights on some of his shows, and uh, it's just a tremendous thing for boxing what they've done, and I look forward to being part of it in the future, too. Um, it's an honor to be part of this show with Maurice in this beautiful city of Phoenix. Great card, great main event, uh, as always, what Matchroom puts on with his own. <clears throat> the test of a true champion is dealing with adversity. And Maurice Hooker wants to show the world that he's a great champion. He just lost his title in a great unification fight, as Eddie said, back in July, to a top world champion, Jose Ramirez. But now he's hungry to get it back, and he wants to show what a great champion he is. As Eddie mentioned, he's got a new training team behind him, top-notch, one of the best teams in the world, led by Bo Mack, Brian McIntyre, 
He's been training with Terrence Crawford for the past two, three months. So I expect him to be ready to thrill the fans and thrill the world again like he has for the past year and a half. Uh, one thing I want to mention uh, on something Eddie said, Eddie uh, Maurice, I think, and he'll tell you for himself, uh, has a desire to try to win the 140-pound title back. Uh, this fight is at a catch weight in between, but if everything goes well, his plan is to try to get a 140-pound title back as soon as possible. Uh, but first things first, he's got to get by Uriel Perez on Saturday, on Friday. Uh, he's a tough, tough fighter. And coming in as a last minute replacement is always dangerous. Maurice knows that, Bomac knows that, and uh, we're confident that Maurice is going to thrill the fans and give them some treats before the holiday season starts. I want to bring him up right now, former and future world champion of the world from Dallas, Texas, Maurice Mighty Mo Hooker. I'd like to thank uh, Rock Nation, the Zone, Mantro for having me here. And, uh, I'm going to say my coach, my team, Brian McIntyre, one is one of the best, like Fred Roach and everybody else. I'm happy to be here Friday and put on a good show. And I want to let everybody know the word. I'm back. I'm coming back. I'm taking my uh, take this fight and uh, I'm hoping to get another world title shot at 140. Uh, I can't go out like that. I feel like I'm one of the best still in the world at 140. I'm here to show y'all why uh, come Friday. I'm not over looking at my opponent. I know he's last minute replacement. He's a good fighter. He's tough. But I mean, it's, it's levels to this. And uh, I'm ready to show, I'm show the world that I'm on a whole other level. And uh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to show y'all. Wow, I'm still the one of the best on 140. Thank you, Mo. We look forward to that fight, Maurice Hooker against Uriel Perez on Friday night. We move to the World Championship, uh, WBC World Flyweight Championship, a great, great fight. And I think one of the most exciting young fighters in Julio Cesar Martinez I've seen for a long, long time. Of course, we know there's gonna be huge Mexican support at the arena on Friday night and they're going to be right behind this young man trying to become a world champion. His opponent, a former world champion, outstanding fighter from Nicaragua, Christopher Rosales. This is just a wonderful, wonderful fight. Firstly, uh, both challenges of course, but from Nicaragua, Christopher Rosales. Hola, eh, agradecido de verdad con todos ustedes, especialmente con Dios por permitirnos estar aquí. Eh, agradecido con Don Eddie, verdad, por permitirnos nuevamente una cartelera más de él y pues venimos preparados esta vez, esta vez venimos en mejores condiciones, gracias a Dios este, una preparación excelente que tuvimos, verdad, eh, agradecido con Don William Ramírez, mi apoderado, el señor Jonda y pues a darlo todo el día viernes y bendiciones a todos. Uh, I'm really grateful for being here, being grateful for, for having the opportunity to fight in here and being, being with all these boxers. Uh, blessings for everyone, blessings for, for everyone, God bless you. Thank you, Christopher. And again, we want to thank uh, Eddie Reynoso, the Canelo team as well for a partnership. Um, with Julio Cesar Martinez, he's a very, very exciting young fighter. And again, I believe the atmosphere at the Talking Stick Arena on Friday night is going to be electric for this fight, the World Flyweight Championship, and his second bite of cherry after that no contest earlier this year, Julio Cesar Martinez. Muchas gracias a todos por, por el apoyo al señor Eddie Hems. Muchas gracias. Ahora sí que venimos con todo, gracias a Dios. Venimos, ahora sí que le agradecemos yo y mi entrenador Mauricio Aceves al señor Eddie Reynoso que siempre nos ha apoyado, siempre ha estado atento ahí a las, a las preparaciones. Muchísimas gracias. Vamos con todo este, este 20 de diciembre. Primeramente Dios, que gane el mejor y bendiciones. Muchas gracias a todos. Hi, uh, I would like to thank everyone, uh, Matchbox Boxing and Eddie, of course. And hope we have a great fight this, this Friday and may the best man win and God bless you all. Thank you, Julio, and thank you, Christopher. WBC World Flyweight Championship, Friday night, live on the zone. 
we move on to the main event. And again, I know we've recapped of the year that we've had, but what a year it's been. You know, some of the highlights of many fights of the year from the world of boxing on the DAZN platform, going back to Juan Estrada against Rung Visaya 2 um, at the Forum. Great fight on the same card. Danny Roman against TJ Dehenny unification. Of course, we saw Canelo Alvarez against Danny Jacobs in May. We saw Gennady Golovkin fight Derevanchenko in one of the fights of the year. We saw Josh Taylor against Regis Progre in one of the fights of the year. We saw Inoue uh, quite recently against Denaire in another fight of the year contender. Some great shows from the UK and around the world. Who can forget June the 1st at Madison Square Garden? We tried to forget it when Andy Ruiz upset the world by beating Anthony Joshua at a sold out Madison Square Garden. And of course, a couple of weeks ago, after a wild five or six weeks on the zone when Canelo Alvarez won the World Light Heavyweight Championship against Sergei Kovalev and KSI beat Logan Paul in a fight that broke broadcast records all over the world. Anthony Joshua capped it all by reclaiming those World Championship belts in Saudi Arabia. It's been a magical, magical year and we're not done yet. This fight for me was a natural fight to make. When Danny Jacobs lost to Canelo for the 160 pound title, I felt, Keith felt, I think the team felt it was time to move up to the super middleweight division. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. We know about the popularity with Julio, with his father. This seemed like a natural fight to make. And if you've watched on social media, Julio's preparation for this fight, he must have, he looked like he's been training seven or eight times a day for this fight. This is his big opportunity to come back. And for Daniel Jacobs, this is his opportunity to come and set up a shot at the World Championship in 2020. It is a great fight. And I want to thank again, both guys, and Julio as well uh, for hanging in there through his ordeal I would call it while all the mess was cleared up and he stayed calm he stayed training and we're delighted with the news today of course that his suspension was completely fully lifted uh, by the Nevada Commission and the fight goes ahead as we always knew it would do as planned on Friday night for Daniel Jacobs again what a guy what a fighter what a story it's a pleasure to work with him and his team as always Keith Connolly who He's a quiet man, didn't want to speak today, I know he's a little bit shy, but what a pleasure it is to work with you, Keith, and the job you've done for Danny has been sensational as well. And Julio, I want to thank Miguel Leff as well, who's done a fantastic job, and of course, Freddie Roach and all the team. So let's meet the fighters for the main event on Friday night, 168 pounds. Firstly, I want to welcome up Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and the song for giving me this opportunity to fight uh, Danny Jacob, of course, uh, Danny Jacob team for uh, this uh, great opportunity in, in my career. I'm, uh, I'm ready for uh, Friday, you know. Um, I, have, I, I hate diet, so I'm, I'm mad because I'm hungry, but I am ready. You know, I know uh, Danny Jacobs, a uh, very good boxer, very good uh, fighter, but I'm 100% ready for this fight. I know, uh, I know um, him. I see uh, in a couple of fights. Uh, I see when he lost with Canelo. I see when uh, he lost with uh, Dimitri Pirov. I don't know the Russian guy. So. I am ready. Uh, that's this a uh, uh, great fight for the people. I want to thank my my lawyer Miguel for uh, helping and did this, uh, this big movie, uh, the, uh, Nevada Commission. So I don't I don't have nothing to say. It's only I'm ready and. I come to win this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julio. And uh, again, I want to pass over now to the former two-time middleweight champion of the world, the miracle man, Daniel Jacobs. Thank you guys for being here today. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the fans of Phoenix, Arizona. The amount of uh, attention that I've received for this fight 
taking place here is through the roof. I know these fight fans here are excited to have a big fight card, giving them guys a great show. I want to thank my team, Team Jacobs, everyone who consists, dedicate themselves to me 100%. I thank you guys for going over and beyond for me, giving me your undivided attention always. I want to thank uh, Mr. Eddie Hearns, Matchroom and Dizone, for allowing me to display my skills on such a platform uh, at such a level that all boxers dream of. So thanks to everyone who made this possible. Uh, I want to thank Chavez for accepting this fight. Uh, I want to thank his lawyer as well for doing such a great job <laughs> for allowing this fight to happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a great opportunity for me. I'm stepping up to middleweight division. Uh, I feel like this is the perfect weight for me. I'm only two pounds away from uh, 68, and for me, that's the first time ever. Uh, I'm probably going to eat breakfast the morning of the fight. I feel strong. My whole camp has been extremely positive, extremely happy. Um, I couldn't ask for a better camp than what I've had. So shout out to my coach who's made unprecedented sacrifices for being there for me, giving me your time and teaching me, you know. I look forward to displaying those skills and all the things that we worked on inside the gym come Friday night. Um, yeah, what else am I gonna say? I got your guys' attention. Uh, just gonna, I'm just, listen, honestly, when I'm fought for the middleweight, championships or when I fought and campaigned at the middleweight for the last two years, you guys don't understand the amount of damage I've been putting on my body trying to make the weight. We've been looking exceptionally well inside the gym, but those last two weeks to a week prior to making weight is where we leave it in the gym. Now I have an opportunity to be able to carry over those skills and be hydrated, be 100% and allow my skills that's in the gym that my team sees, allow the world an opportunity to see that. Um, I'm extremely excited to have this new opportunity. I know the super middleweight division is full of great competition as well. So I look forward to this, this test come Friday night. God willing, we get the victory, move on to bigger and better things. So thank you everyone for supporting this and I'll see you guys Friday night, thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Julio. Uh, just a special thanks as well to the whole DAZN team. Uh, Joe Markowski will be here tomorrow. Uh, John Skipper, Simon Denyer, Ed Breeze, Tom Davis, everybody. Uh, Krista Gentil, there's too many to, to name. Matt Miller, of course. This has been a, a, a roller coaster of a year or so. We are just getting started. 2020 is going to be a beast. We just announced our card in Miami on January the 30th with Andrade against Luke Kida with Tevin Farmer, against Jojo Diaz with Danny Roman, against Ahmed Aliyev, triple header world championship and some big news coming on that card as well later this week. And tomorrow in Los Angeles, we will announce the February 29th fight of Mikey Garcia, our latest signing and latest superstar to join the DAZN movement. It's been fantastic. It's been the most crazy years from week after week after week to country after country, flying around, staging these events. We couldn't do it without our brilliant matchroom team. Um, Frank Smith, Sean Palmer, done such an amazing job. There's so many guys, Eric Botcher, our matchmaker, Josh Roy, Lewis Ward, Anthony Lever, Chris Provino, I'm gonna get some names wrong, or some of them, David Diamante, Michael Buffer, uh, Brittany, Sydney, uh, who else is there? Paul Reddick, well he's in the UK, Paul Reddick. Rooney, can't believe I forgot Rooney. Rooney, whoever else there is. Again, guys, it's been a, everybody's just put the effort in so much. And thank you to our partners as well, the co-promoters, the managers. Thank you to the haters, you know, other people out there. Thank you to Bob Aaron, you know, saw his comments lately. I mean, this is a guy, he's, he's cleaner than clean, right? I mean, you know, he only wanted Antonio Margarito to fight in another state once he found cement in his hand wraps. So no problem at all. So, you know, um, it's been an experience working over here. We've loved it, we've loved the experience, and 2020 is gonna be huge, and we wanna end it with a bang on Friday night, Talking Stick Arena, it's gonna be a huge crowd. 
live on the zone. Do not miss it. Danny Jacobs against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. We're going to do head to heads up here now. Weigh in tomorrow. Let's have a great weekend. Thanks so much for attending. Thank you very much. He is special. Absolute dynamite. Oh my God.